How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. This will be the start of the Discovery 2 project and uh, today I'm going to be replacing the mass airflow sensor. If you watch the walk around video, um, I'm getting a check engine light P0102 and P1884. The P0102 is a low voltage or low power um, mass airflow sensor so I'm going to go ahead and get that replaced. And the P1884 just comes on with it. But bought this off of Rock Auto for 30 bucks. And I know it's cheap, but I haven't had any problems with any of the parts that I've gotten off of Rock Auto in the past. So, first things we'll do is unplug the mass airflow sensor and then loosen the clamp with a flathead screwdriver. There's going to be two push tabs on the sides here, so we'll just squeeze those in and then just try to wiggle it out. If it's really stuck on there, you might have to use two hands, which I just did, so now we this can come off. And after those, you're going to loosen up the clamps on the air filter housing, uh, so that way we can lift this up and then undo these clamps as well. Then you'll wiggle the mass airflow sensor out, and this is the old one. And the new cheap one, which hopefully lasts a decent amount of time. And when you're putting it back, you'll do the mass airflow sensor first, and just make sure that that mesh uh, grate is uh, going toward the air filter. And once that's in, then you'll do the air filter housing cover. Just make sure those two tabs go into the slots there. And uh, you'll have to raise this up to meet with this and then it'll kind of settle down together. Then you're just going to twist this to make sure it lines up with the clamps here. Just like that. Then we're just going to plug this back in and re tighten the clamp. Hopefully, that fixes the issue. Um, it'll, it'll probably take a couple drive cycles for the check engine light to clear. So, um, I'm going to go clear that and then hopefully it doesn't come back, or I just got to, like I said, wait a couple drive cycles before it goes away. So usually when I was clearing the codes, um, I would drive, come back, and then turn it off. Once I turned it back on, then the check engine light was back, so we'll see if it's gone now after replacing. Woo! Nice. So I literally just drove it for, I don't know, about five minutes, and uh, it is good to go. So that takes out one issue. Now I just got to take care of the brake light because uh, I called and they, I guess they do fail for brake lights being on, um, which stinks because I think last time I went in, one of the technicians didn't care about that because it technically didn't have anything to do with the emissions, which is true, but it's a safety thing, so it's all good. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and try to get it tested, so uh, we'll see how this goes.
right, they still let me test with the brake light on and it passed, which is awesome. So now this is good to go for plates. Uh, just got some other things to take care of. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope this was helpful to you and uh, we'll see you in the next one.